Today on Face the Nation, they're up, they're down, as the Republican campaign roller coaster takes yet another turn. And some of the names of the fallen sound out. Bachman, Curry, Kane, perhaps Ron Paul will now get his shot as the media frontrunner. Don't look now, but it happened. Ron Paul may have been a fringe candidate before, but he has moved into a statistical tie for the lead in Iowa, where the first contest will be held in just a matter of weeks. Is he surprised? Not so much. I think we've been there a long time. I think they've been in denial. <laughs> Nor is he bashful about where he says our economic problem began. The Federal Reserve is immoral, uh, it's unconstitutional, and it's a disaster. As for foreign policy and a strong national defense. I think military spending diminishes our defense. I'd much rather see that money spent at home. He's with us to talk about that and a lot more. Then we'll turn to the deepening Washington gridlock over taxes and the deficit. We'll hear from Pennsylvania's Republican Senator Pat Toomey, a member of the so-called Super Committee that's grappling with that. And we'll bring in West Virginia's Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, who has his own ideas about the mess Congress is in as we explore the broader question. Is all this the reason that Paris Hilton, according to some polls, is now more popular than Congress? This is Face the Nation. CBS News in Washington, Face the Nation with Bob Schieffer. And good morning again. We begin this morning with Congressman Ron Paul. The polls, Mr. Paul, suggest that you are now in the thick of it out in Iowa, basically in a statistical tie with uh, Romney, with Kane, and with Mr. Gingrich. So I want to ask you some questions now that you're among the front runners. We need to know more about your positions uh, on the issues. And I want to start with foreign policy. Because your statements over the years, posted on your website and elsewhere, some of the things you have said in the debates, suggest that you believe that 9-11 happened because of actions that the United States took. Is that correct? Is that correct? Well, I, I think there's an influence, and that's exactly what uh, you know, the 9-11 Commission said. That's what the DOD has said. And that's also what the CIA has said, and that's what a lot of researchers have said. And uh, just remember, immediately after 9-11, we removed the base from Saudi Arabia. So there is a connection. That doesn't do the whole full explanation, but our policies definitely had an influence. And you talk to the people who committed it and those individuals who would like to do us harm, uh, they say, yes, uh, we don't like uh, American bombs to be falling on our country, and we don't like uh, the intervention that we do in their nations. So to deny this, is, I think, is very dangerous. But to well, argue the case that they want to do us harm because we're free and prosperous, I think is a very, very dangerous notion because it's not true. Well, I, I would, I would uh, question the import of what some of those commissions found that, that you cited there. But basically, what you're saying, uh, Mr. Paul, is that it was America's fault that 9-11 happened, and it was our fault that it happened. No, I, I, think, that's, I think that's a, miscon, a misconstruing of what I'm saying, because America is you and I. And uh, we didn't cause it. The average American didn't cause it. But if you have a flawed policy, it may influence it. When uh, uh, Ronald Reagan went into Lebanon, he, was deeply, he deeply regretted this because he said if he'd have been more neutral, those Marines wouldn't have died in Lebanon because the policy was flawed. The same thing that McNamara said after the Vietnam oh. War. And he wrote in his memoirs that, you know, if, uh, if he would have changed, if, it, if we don't learn from our policies, it won't be worth anything. So I'm saying policies have an effect, but that's a far cry from blaming America. Well, I mean, in America, you're right, supposed yeah, to be able but, to uh, criticize right. your own government. You're supposed to be able to criticize your own government without saying you're un-American. But what you're, what the implication but what, is. what you are saying, it, it was the government's fault. That that basically is what you are saying. Let me move on to from something else. I'm saying the policy ma the policymakers fault. Uh, the policymakers fault. Contributed to it. All right. Contributed uh, to it. Let contributed me ask you this: <clears throat> Am I correct that your idea of how to discourage Iran from building nuclear weapons is to be nicer to Iran's leaders? Is that correct? Well, 
I, I, no, I think to be, uh, you know, we have 12,000 diplomats. I'm suggesting that maybe we ought to use some of them. But just think of how we prevented a nuclear war with the Soviets when the Soviet uh, missiles were put in Cuba. We didn't say we're going to attack you. Uh, Kennedy and Khrushchev talked and they made a deal. You take your weapons out of Cuba, we'll take them out of Turkey. That's the kind of talk that I want. I, don't, I think the greatest danger now is for us to overreact. And this is what, what I'm fearful of. Iran doesn't have a bomb. There's no proof. And there's no new information regardless of this uh, recent report. And for us to overreact and talk about bombing Iran, that's much more dangerous. We got the, we well, got the, Libyans, to, to, we got the Libyans to get rid of their nuclear power and their nuclear weapons. And look at what happened to them. I, I, so uh, Mr. we got Paul, to understand that. May I interrupt just for a second? No one has suggested in the U.S. government that we are going to bomb Iran. What they have said is that we're going to impose very tough sanctions. You are against sanctions on Iran, is that correct? Yeah, because sanctions are the initial step to war. I was opposed to all the sanctions for 10 years and the bombing that uh, was occurring with Iraq as I said it would lead to war. Uh, but if you say nobody's suggesting it, why don't you listen to the debates? I'm mean, uh, listening to some of Mr. the other Paul, candidates. Mr. Paul, may I correct you? I am listening to the debates. I know there have been some candidates who've talked about that, including Mr. Romney. The United States right. government has not said we're going to bomb Iran. I mean, that, that's just a problem. No, but obviously they haven't said, obviously they haven't said that, but the implication is, is nothing is off the table. You've heard those statements. Well, yes. All right. Let's move on then. Do you think there is any place in the world where United States forces should be stationed? You've talked about bringing them home from Afghanistan, from, uh, from Iraq. Uh, is there any place where you think uh, it helps us to have U.S. forces stationed? No, other than the fact that I think a submarine is a very worthwhile weapon, and I believe we can defend ourselves with submarines and all our troops back at home. Uh, this whole idea that we have to be in 130 country and 900 bases, now they've just invented a weapon that can hit any spot in the world in one hour. So you I mean, would... what's this idea? This is old, this is old fashioned idea that you have to keep troops on 900 bases around the world. It makes no sense at all. Besides, so... we're bankrupt. We can't afford it anymore. So you would, you would uh, if you were president, you'd bring home the troops from Japan, you'd bring home the troops from South Korea? You would? Okay. Absolutely, and the people, are with, the people are with me on that because we can't afford it. It would save us a lot of money. All those troops would spend their money here at home. And besides, those troops overseas aggravate our enemies, motivate our enemies. I think it's a danger to our national defense, and we could save a lot of money cutting out the <clears throat> military expenditures that contribute nothing to our defense. All right, let me ask you about some domestic things. Your plan to get the country back uh, on a firm financial footing is to close, including, among other things, the Department of Education, the Department of Energy, Commerce, Interior, Housing and Urban Development. You would cut back the federal workforce by 10 percent. You've also suggested we should uh, close FEMA, which is the Emergency uh, Management uh, Agency. I, right. I have to ask you this. What do you do about all the things that those agencies control, run, supervise? For example, what, what happens to the national parks if you close the Department of the Interior? Do we just let them go by the by or what? No, no, no way. And, and the program deals with this. There's transition funds, but we would like to see a lot of land sold off, but we're not going to just ignore the parks. Uh, no, not, not at all. I mean, uh, the, the money isn't there. These are departments that are doing too much. The American people are sick and tired of our educational system. Just think of how we've been involved and give out loans and we educate students. The price of the, the cost of education goes up. They graduate. They don't have jobs and they have a trillion dollars worth of debt. We have to question that. This country's in bankruptcy. We have right. to deal with it. We can't, we can't remain in denial. And that is my argument. And believe me, this is why I'm getting a good reception on the campaign trail. All right. Well, uh, we want to thank you for coming on this morning and for answering the questions. Ron Paul, thanks for being here this morning. Th We're going thanks. to uh, shift gears now and talk about what's going on in Washington.